Welcome back to a, another spontaneous episode of Vulnerability Time. So first off, I want to give, give a shout out to Brad. Hey, Brad. Oh, wow. Um, I want to give a shout out to Shay. And I want to give a shout out to my broski, my best friend, Alex. I love you, bro. Um, so y'all, I had a word. I have a word for y'all about letting go. So I had a realization, okay? And I hope this helps. Have you ever struggled to let go? Or do you have that fear of like, you have to hold on to something so tight because you you fear that if you let go, if, if you're, if you're uh, submit, you know, or surrender that you letting go, it's going to, everything's going to fall apart. You know, that, that holding on is because there's a root of needing to be in control because there have been things in our life that have taught us that we have to be in control or things are going to go bad because once upon a time when I was growing up um I wasn't in control of things and y'all know how that went and so the trauma taught me okay the only way I can be safe is to be in control of everything and as I've been healing in my trauma journey God has shown me that I don't um um that holding on so tightly so that you know because i'm like i have to be in control um of myself not of others of myself um i've now been shown that that's no longer serving me anymore as i'm healing i'm starting to see a lot of things you know um drift off of my life um things that used to serve me back then so what I got today, um, I thought about it. I was like, holding on to, I, I, I have that fear. If I let go, everything's going to fall apart. But truth be told, it's the opposite. If I hold on super tight of the fear, because I have a fear of letting go. If I hold on super tight, that's when things fall apart. It's me letting go. It's like once I get my hands off of it, when things come together, when I surrender it or when I just, you know what? What is meant for me is meant for me. So I guess what I'm trying to say is for at least for me, and let me know if you can relate to this. Holding on is doing damage because I don't know how to in a lot of areas of my life, I don't know how to hold on in a healthy way. I, when I hold on, I tend to grip and I tend to grip to make sure I was like, I'm holding on, I'm holding on. And I just tend to grip and things just start to break because of the pressure of the gripping. But if I let go, things are going to grow. Things are going to grow. So this just teaches me that, you know, the whole needing to be in control, you know, because um, for me, that comes from a place of, of trauma, the need to be in control, because that was protection. That was to make sure nothing horrible was going to happen to me. Um, that was the best that I could do. So that's something that's really cool um, now in my life. It's how certain things don't serve me anymore that used to serve me. Some of those things that don't serve me no more end up harming me. Um, but that's part of the healing and the learning process. But um, yes, for me, the whole letting go thing is, um, here's an example. My expectations of how my life should be right now. Like, oh, I'm supposed to be married to a good man, good godly man, and, 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 kids and all that good stuff and so I held on to that expectation and I did not let it go and I gripped it and I gripped it and I gripped it you know um and I felt like I've done damage to myself and to a couple others because I was gripping it so tight but it's like as long as I was holding it right I had some control right mm, what I needed to do was let go and let it be and let it come to me what is meant for me will come to me you know and that's the thing Letting go is not easy, okay? What helped me to get to this point, and I'm still growing in the area, is 
what is the root? What is your root of not being able to let go? Is it a past of control and security? Is it a past of just, just constant disorder and chaos? You know, what is the root to it? If we really want to kill a tree, we really gotta, we gotta go after the roots. That's a, a source to take out. So what we need to do in order to heal and to learn about ourselves and, about, and, and learn to unlearn things and to help us let go, what is the root of you not being able to let go? And then be patient with yourself in that and guess what? Be patient with your patience because guess what? It might take time for you to 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 you know to get patient. <laughs> like me, it took time and I'm still learning patience. But like for me, patience and I'm going to touch a little bit on this, you know, when whenever season 3 starts, um patience you know that's so tough for me because there's another root to me being impatient it's for me being patient um that correlates to something is wrong something is wrong for example like when i'm waiting you know we're in the drive through society we want everything quick fast and convenient you know um for example like when i'm waiting for food and they're taking like so long, I'm thinking something's wrong. Why? Because when I was little, I had I had trust issues when I was little because I've had parents tell me, oh, okay, mm -hmm, yeah, I'll, I'll think about it or whatever, whatever. Um, or they'll make a promise and they will not follow up with it. And they would like punish me or get upset with me because I brought up the promise asking them, hey, you know, remember you said this? Um, and so, that has caused me to internalize um, patience. And now it, it manifests in a way that's not healthy for me. Um, that's not healthy for me anymore. There we go. Um, Cause I had to learn, don't wait for anything. Just don't wait. And you know, there's a level of discernment with that. Um, so for me, it was like, if I'm waiting on something in life or waiting for something in life, I'm thinking it's not here because something is wrong. So I'm trying to search what is wrong, what is wrong, what is wrong? When really, it's, I just need to be patient. But I'm like, what is, what is, what truly is that? I know what the word says. Like I, I, like I hear the word patience. I know how to spell it. I can look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> I know what it means. I can give you examples of what patient could look like, but I was like, I don't know how to be patient in a lot of areas of my life. And after years of wondering why the hell, what the hell, I learned by the grace of God, I learned that um, there's a root to why I struggle with patience. And I, I say that because patience and letting go a lot of times they can go hand in hand. And so um, just like I had to find the root to why I am impatient in a lot of areas of my life, I had to find a root to why is it hard for me to let go? It's like I'm holding an object or I'm just holding something so hard and I'm just holding it in hopes that it doesn't fall apart. And I'm afraid that if I let go things will fall apart when really it is the opposite. I need to let go for things to come together. And if I keep holding so tight, that's when it falls apart. Um, so that's pretty cool to think about. And, and, and lastly, folks, is something that I'm, you know, learning and that's what's helping me learn and unlearn things is a lot of these areas of my life where I wish I could be doing better or that I'm not doing so good at or things that I'm not and things that I am, you know, I'm looking at, okay, why is this so hard to fix? What is the root of this issue? For example, my porn addiction, there's a root issue from the past from childhood traumas and how it manifests and things like that into multitude of ways. One of those ways being addiction, 
um, of any type. My addiction was webcam and porn addiction. Um, and I still struggle with both, but I struggle, I, yeah, I struggle with both. Um, not as much, but like I struggle with both. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's what the addiction brings. It's, it's, it's the sanity that addiction can bring. Like that's the thing. A lot of times addiction is not about addiction. A lot of times addiction is just about gaining a form of sanity. And it's like, we're going to do whatever we need to do to gain sanity that we're already supposed to have. Unfortunately, we've had people that have intentionally and unintentionally fucked us up. (laughs) And maybe ourselves fucked ourselves up intentionally or unintentionally, you know, through circumstances and, you know, putting ourselves in the wrong situations or just situations happening to us. Regardless, no shame on you. Shame off of you. Do not have shame on yourself for how you handled things, how you went about things, and for the scars that it brought. Okay? It, it, look, you know why you gave that relationship another try when you know damn well that was unhealthy? Maybe there's a root to it. Maybe your heart is just so beautiful enough to be hopeful and to see the best in someone who doesn't see the best in themselves or you. Maybe there's a beautiful root or maybe there's a toxic root, but whatever it is, folks, this didn't start to you. I mean, this didn't start with you, it started to you. What that means is you are not to blame. Now, are we responsible for our healing now in our journey? Yes. But we don't gotta be, we don't gotta heal on our own. <laughs> Let's mention that. But um, but we're it's not our fault the things that have happened to us. You know what I mean? It's it's not our fault. You know, um, I dare to say that it's not your fault, even if it kind of was your fault. Like if it was like way in the past, and I, cause guess what? You know, the human experience it's all about impact and it's all about imperfection, um, which are the few many aspects that are, you know, a part of the human experience. Imperfection is gonna happen, folks. You're gonna need to fuck up in order to get up sometimes. You're just gonna have to. You're gonna have to have those mistakes, okay, in order to see some change, in order to truly learn, okay? But, um, yes, what, what is the, what is the root to why it's hard to let go of this toxic relationship? Or what is the root of why it's so hard to be patient? Or why is it so hard to trust? Could the root be we don't trust ourselves because we were taught not to trust ourselves or because we blame ourselves deep down, whether we realize it or not, maybe we blame ourselves for things that have happened to us or situations that, you know, put us in predicaments where our trust was broken. Do we blame ourselves? Do we blame ourselves for things we don't need to be blaming ourselves for? What is the root? What is the root to something that you notice in your life that you are consistently doing that you don't like? What is the root? Because clearly you trying to stop cold turkey, that's maybe not working and that's okay. You know, get that root healed, point out that root, call out that root, find that root of the problem and look, Find that root. And look, you're going to be unstoppable. Once you find that root and can start healing and working on that, shit, 20 years from now, you're going to be unstoppable. And can't nothing come at you once you figure out what that root was because now you're able to recognize it. You know, um, you're able to be aware of it. And it, like I said, it does take patience. Um, I hope I explained that pretty well. Um, if I didn't, oh, well, this is vulnerability time. I'm sure we got, I got something out of it. You know, that reminder of, okay. In order for things to fall into line in my life, I have to let go of the need to control. I got to let it go. I got to let go the need of control. How do I do that? I got to go to the root. What is the root of me not being able to let go? What does that root look like? What does that root look like? Oh, um, part of the tree, uh, the trunk, excuse me, um, letting go is the branches, okay? And the leaves is everything in my life that is affected because of the branches. The trunk is control. 
But what is the root? The root has some control in it. Um, but what, what more is that root? So I'm going to be talking to my counselor about that. Why is, um, why can it, why is it hard for me to let go? Now it's a little bit easier now, but I feel like I'm still going to go to counseling and get like healing on that because I'm like, if it, if, if it can be easier than it is now, um, I, I'm all for it. If what it takes for me to let go of something with as least amount of pain as possible if all that takes is healing, uh, hell yeah. Like, basically, I don't want to be, I don't want to be stuck. I don't want to be perfect. I don't ever want to have it all together. I want to be able to lean on people. I want to be able to lean on my faith and God. Um, I want to be able to lean on people. I want to be able to be interdependent. Um, so when I'm saying all this stuff, if I had a choice of if I could make all my problems go away and like, oh, I can be super patient or easy to let go things and it just be perfect, I would choose not perfect. Um, I would choose l less difficult, <laughs> which is why I'm getting the healing, but I wouldn't choose perfect because I, these circumstances, me struggling to let myself, to let things go, you know, me struggling to be patient, this has also brought um, a lot of, you know, um, new skills and self-awareness into my life. Um, and I'm able to, in the midst of this, learn how to also lean on other people and not do it on my own. So it's like, don't think that these things that you don't like about yourself just because they feel like a burden maybe it's not just a burden maybe it's also a blessing maybe it's just a temporary blessing you know so i felt like someone needed to hear that um i know i i know as hell i needed to hear that um with that being said, folks, I hope this makes sense. Some, you know, some my insecurity sometimes is not being able to um, make sense sometimes. Like, you know what I mean? Like when you say something in your head, but when it comes out of your mouth, like you're just, it's you're struggling to like match the brain to the tongue. <laughs> you're just kind of like struggling, like, okay, this makes sense in my head. But now that I'm talking about it, okay, it doesn't make sense. So like, this person's not understanding me, so I gotta go back to square one. But um, but yeah, with that being said, folks, um, I also want to give another shout out to Pops. Um, Pops know who he is, Brad's dad. Pops, I want to give a shout out to Ooh, Kenneth, Christian, Angel, Elisa. Kay and Tyler as well. I love y'all so much. Um, and I'm glad to be like surrounded by y'all. And I mentioned those names and the names of the beginning is because like, you know, um, because I've struggled to let go of things in my life because I'm impatient about a lot of things. You know, I've seen these people in my life in some way, shape or form heal me in that area now, i'm not completely healed but from where i was before i met them to after i met them look at me now i'm so proud of me i am where i i am where in my life now what i used to pray to be i'm where what i used to pray to be at um thank you god thank you to just the people um out of the many people that have came in my life and just really helped me and y'all it's because of like my burdens um also burden burden slash blessing that's the thing about god and the universe it's like there are a lot of things that it's going to work out for our good it's going to work out for our good so i just be like take that burdens you actually bless me too fuck you because you make me feel horrible but you ask you also bless me too so fuck you to not to struggling to let go but guess what you also 
help help me receive blessing and you taught me things so um yes i hope that makes sense if not a well <laughs> if not a well enjoy the rest of the season folks um we still got a couple more episodes left i think we have a total of 15 16 episodes of season two and i believe we're about to release episode eight um friday um so we have about seven more episodes after this week um and then be prepared for season three if y'all think season two is awesome it just gets better and better y'all think season two is awesome you have no idea what's in store for season three. Oh, it's 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 good it's definitely good already in the preparation stages and stuff like that got the discussion points down there's going to be multiple hosts i don't know how to say that word hosts um host but like more than one host i don't know how to say it like the s host hosts host hosts why do I keep slurring the S's like it's a snake slivering? Uh, host hosts. Okay, whatever. There's going to be multiple hosts. <laughs> I'm not even joking, y'all. I don't know how to say that word. Hosts. I keep, I keep dragging the S. I don't know. Anyways, the point is, if no one has told you today that they love you, please allow you to be the first. I want you to tell yourself right now, even if you don't believe it, tell yourself that you love you and that you are proud of you. You've overcame 100% of the bad days that have came against you. It don't matter if you did it perfect or not. It don't matter if you fucked up with it. Guess what? You're still breathing. You won. You might not have won how you thought you wanted to win or how society tells you you should win. Guess what? You won you won you are still breathing therefore you have overcome 100 percent 100 percent you might not feel like it guess what sometimes winning does not feel like winning you know winning um is action more than it is feeling so um i need you to know if you are sitting here listening to this uh, that means that you are still breathing that means that you won and you still continue to win and that guess what it's literally not over until it's over so you might have thinking you've given up but guess what um every day every second every minute is still another possibility for you to pick up what you gave up or quote unquote gave up maybe you didn't give up maybe you were just taking a rest Hmm? Maybe you were just taking a rest. Don't be too hard on yourself. You're doing way better than you think you're doing. I swear you are. Trust me, you are. Um, with that being said, I will see y'all um, Friday for another episode of Vulnerability Time. We'll be, we'll be talking about when the dust settles. I don't know what the hell that means, but we're going to find out, aren't we? Alrighty. Love y'all. I life y'all. You are important and I swear you are valuable. And I'm not just saying that in a cliche way. You are valuable. You are not deserving of love because you are worth love. Why? Because deserving is earned. Worth is given. You are worth love. Period. Just as you are. You are worth love. Tell yourself that. And, and if you're listening as well, tell someone else that as well. Because, you know, we all need to hear it. All right. See y'all folks. Hosts. I don't know how to say that damn word. Hosts.